Hey, it's Thursday, so that means another episode of International Maritime Security Associates Maritime Video Blog. I'm Corey Ranslam, and today we're going to discuss cruise ship security. Thank you for joining us today on another International Maritime Security Associates Maritime Video Blog. Today's topic about cruise ship security will probably have a little bit more of a broader appeal, not specifically just to the maritime industry, but to the broader public in general and for people who are actually thinking about taking a cruise, hopefully we can provide you a little bit more information. We're also gonna break this topic up into two different episodes. Our episode today, we're going to discuss some of the laws and regulations, both domestically here in the United States and internationally that affect cruise ship security. And our episode next time will be about the passenger ticket contract, some of your responsibilities as a passenger, and just some uh, overall tips uh, to consider uh, when it comes to security and taking a cruise. So for the first part of this, let's dive right into the laws and the regulations side of it. Our background here at International Maritime Security Associates is fairly extensive in the cruise lines. We do provide certain services for the major cruise lines, so I wanna put that disclaimer out there. However, we wanna to try to be as unbiased as possible when it comes to discussing these types of topics. When you look at the statistics, when it comes to crime reporting on board cruise liners, uh, here in the United States and around the world, uh, it's very low compared to the number of passengers uh, that are moved. So cruising is, uh, statistically speaking, a very safe vacation, but with anything, whether you're on a cruise ship, at a hotel, uh, at a casino, an amusement park, wherever that may be, you still wanna make sure that you have situational awareness and understand what's going on around you. Today, again, we're gonna be talking about some of the laws and the regulations domestically here in the United States and internationally that affect the major cruise lines when it comes to security. So the first place that we always look when it comes to the international side of it, and specifically for maritime security, are the ISPS codes, or the International Ship and Port Facility Security Codes. We talk about the ISPS codes in almost every episode that we have. Again, we'll have a link to the ISPS codes. It's a slew uh, of codes that have been pushed forward by the International Maritime Organization as a foundation for maritime security. We won't get too much into the details here as we've discussed it in a, num a number of other episodes. So make sure you check out some of our other videos where we talk specifically about maritime security. So the ISPS codes are the foundation that most countries around the world use to develop their own internal regulations when it comes to maritime security. You also have the ISM codes. These are more along the lines of safety and safety management, but there are some pieces that can potentially uh, touch maritime security. We'll have links for that uh, below as well. There's a couple of laws here in the United States that are specific to the cruise lines. Uh, maritime Transportation Security Act of 2002 uh, is, is a big part of uh, maritime security and also the foundation for a couple of other laws and regulations. The Passenger Vessel Services Act of 1886, and yes, I said 1886, also affects cruise ship security and some cruise ship operations. And then the recently passed, recently as of 2010, the Cruise Vessel Safety and Security Act. So specifically, we're gonna take a look at some of those laws that affect cruise ships. When you're on board a cruise ship, the primary jurisdiction while that ship is in international waters is the flag state. So whatever the flag of the vessel is, wherever that vessel is registered, whatever country that is, that country has primary jurisdiction. Now there may be some exceptions uh, when you talk about international laws and we'll just discuss a couple of those here briefly. Uh, the second uh, place where you'll find primary jurisdiction is the territorial seas where that cruise ship could be located. So for instance, if you're on board a cruise ship that has a Bahamian flag in international waters, the Bahamas has primary jurisdiction. But if that cruise ship is inside the territorial waters of say the United Kingdom, then the United Kingdom would have primary jurisdiction. For cruise ships that have itineraries that will enter ports here in the United States, there's another law that comes into play, and that's the Cruise Vessel Safety and Security Act. There are numerous parts of the Cruise Vessel Safety and Security Act. We're not gonna get into each and every detail here, 
but the Cruise Vessel Safety and Security Act was put forward to help improve the security on board cruise ships, crime reporting, and some of the evidence collection uh, when a crime occurs. It's very difficult to do some of that at sea. Uh, my personal opinion is, I think that in parts, the Cruise Vessel Safety and Security Act is an overreach of the U.S. authority on the sovereign flag territory of a vessel, but that's my personal opinion. There are some improvements to cruise ship security that have been made uh, when it comes to passenger safety. For the Cruise Vessel Safety and Security Act, for instance, if a cruise ship is sailing from New York City to Port Canaveral, Florida, and there's an incident that happens on board that vessel specifically against a U.S. citizen, the FBI will have primary jurisdiction. The flag state could um, insert jurisdiction, but at this point, with the cruise ship being in uh, or coming into a United States port, the flag state typically has not inserted jurisdiction. However, I have seen cases with cruise liners that go from the United States to other foreign ports and then return to the United States. If there's an incident against a U.S. passenger and say that ship is a Bahamian flag and it's pulling into the Bahamas, I have seen the Bahamians insert their jurisdiction over that particular vessel um, and arrest people on board. So there are some nuances of this uh, law and regulation to be able to understand. So that's just one of the nuances, the Cruise Vessel Safety and Security Act, um, besides the crime reporting. Uh, it also addresses uh, things like the railing height, CCTV systems on board vessels, uh, crime scene and evidence collection, and some of the training with security officers on board. When you get on board a cruise ship, you will find security officers and security personnel from a slew of countries around the world. The majority of these men and women that I've had the opportunity to work with are of the highest level of professionalism and many come from military or law enforcement within their respective countries. So there is a, a fairly substantial amount of experience with the shipboard uh, security teams. And also some cruise ships use supplemental security personnel from different countries, depending on what the operation is for special events or charters. A lot of those folks who are a part of those supplemental security teams are usually highly trained as well. However, that doesn't absolve your right as, or absolve your responsibility as a parent um, or a citizen when it comes to being on board the cruise ship. So that's just a brief look at some of the laws and regulations that affect cruise lines. We want to take a look at next time in part two of this episode, more in detail into the Cruise Vessel Safety and Security Act. Also the passenger ticket contract might talk a little bit too about some of the things that I've seen on board with passengers and, and your rights and kind of responsibilities as a passenger. Make sure as we do every time that if you have questions or you wanna interact with us, be sure to leave your comments below. You can interact with us through our social media on our Twitter account and Facebook, which will also be detailed in the comments section below, or reach out to us through our website at imsa.global. Thanks for joining us for another Maritime video blog. Hope you enjoyed it, and we will see you next time.